Thriller was the band that I played in before Touche, and it was like a uh, every time I die sort of like the Bronxy sort of thing, but it had like some metalcore influence to it. I don't know. It, it, that was a band that actually started in high school, which kind of I consider the boot camp band. Like I learned all the things to do and not to do when being in a band. We also never had a record out, which is the funniest thing. We never put out an actual record. We put out like a CD EP through like a small label. And, and those days, which were the mid 2000s, which is the craziest time in music, if you really think about it, because you could tour by just the amount of plays that you have on MySpace. I quit after some weird shit happened. Our van broke down in Oregon. I got in a van with the other band we were on tour with. Uh, my band took all the money made on the tour uh, and put it on a roulette table in Vegas, lost it all. Uh, that was supposed to fix the van. And at that time, the most amount of, I think we had $1,200. So uh, I got home from that and was like, I think I'm done. Uh, yes, I worked at a record store for a long time. And then I left the record store because I was like, I need an adult job. I ended up becoming the uh, the head of shipping and receiving at a company called Visual Data. They did a lot of editing for like syndication shows, so at first I was a driver, so I would be the one driving the episodes of like the Bernie Mac show, uh, Malcolm in the Middle. Every day I had to drive it to Fox, which is actually the same building as Nakatomi Plaza from Die Hard. I have to go there every single day. Then I worked in sales at a company called Revolt, which was a tape, film, and media distribution company. That was the last job that I had. Uh, I got fired from there and then just full-time toured Touche. Uh, very surreal. Uh, very, very surreal. If there was five people that should not have been there, uh, it was us. Elliot and I were just laughing the whole time. Like, we would see celebrities and, and we would call taking pictures with them, collecting cards. So we'd be like, oh, let's go get that card. Let's go get it. Let's, let's, like, like, oh, and Paris Wilson just walked in. Let's go, let's go get it. Let's, let's go get that card. Where I was walking down the stairs at one point, Beyonce was walking up towards me. And I had to, I, I got like the step aside and she then walked like inches through, like, it was crazy. And then uh, as I was trying to collect Tyrese's card, Kanye West was leaving the party and uh, was walking directly at me. And it was the craziest thing because people were just throwing their cameras over his shoulder and being like, Sylvie, Sylvie. And he's just like deadpan staring, walking. And uh, I don't think he's actually making eye contact with me. He's like looking through me, you know, as I'm like standing there. And I just fumbled and said like, no, I like your music. And, and he just walked right past me. I would say he's not as crazy as he used to be. He's, he's more like a wake up, do yoga, go surf at the beach all day kind of guy now. He's living the life, he's doing it right. Like logged in, like posting, 2011, 2012. I'll, you know what, I gotta say, if it wasn't for the Bridge Nine board, Touche Amore would not be a band because as much as we went through the, the being loved on the board to being fucking hated on the board, I booked the full US Touche tour via the board. Like I posted the tour dates, kids helped me fill it in. Because of that, we, uh, you know, got the attention that got us like great sets at Sound and Fury the first time, which then got us introduced to Death Wish. And uh, yeah, we owe a lot to the Bridge Nine board. As much as like, if I went on there and searched our name, I'm sure I would find really mean things said about me. We flew into Jakarta, played, and then we didn't know what the next plan was. We didn't really know how far Jog Jakarta was. They're like, oh, it's it's an overnight drive, and we're like. Okay, we've done those, like, I, it's fine. But it ended up being a 15-hour uh, overnight drive. No seat belts, the hottest car imaginable. The engine was definitely in the middle of the car, so, like, the thing you would put your feet up on was just protruding just all of the heat. So we drove the whole way. Uh, also, the, you know, the, the way they drive is just, like, pedal to the floor as fast as they can, then right, just right before they, they smash into the car in front of them, they slam on the brakes. And, uh, and go beep beep and then drive onto, into oncoming traffic. So there's there's like no windows. You're just like, it was so fucking scary. And then we get there, we're like, oh, maybe we can rest for a little while. We like kind of try to take a nap at this place and we play the show and we're like, okay, so now what? They're like, oh, well, you're driving back. And it took 17 hours to get back. <laughs> um, I eat like shit. Uh, I'll say I recently got into asparagus. It's pretty good. Arby's? <laughs> I mean, yo, here's my thing with Arby's. My, my true answer is I love Raisin Cane's. Wiener schnitzel, chili dogs, so good. My Arby's thing is if I'm tackling an overnight drive and I'm hungry and I'm just like, well, what's always at the gas station? A fucking Arby's. So throw, throw, down, <laughs> throw down a disgusting roast beef sandwich and, uh, and some fries and uh, I get re-energized and get a store destination.
Uh, longer than two years ago. I'm from Southern California and jokingly had my first burrito to be offensive in Florida at a place called the Burrito Gallery. And it was awful. We should have, but no. To be fair, we haven't actually played West Virginia. Here's why. Two different times booked a show in West Virginia and then we show up and it's across the bridge from the border in a town called Proctorville, Ohio. It was like a basement show. And I think a different kid booked it the second time. So we're like, playing West Virginia. Then we get sent the address. We're like, no! So yeah, we can't say we've played West Virginia yet. It's just really frustrating. <laughs> Last time I moshed, uh, where's my blue Gatorade? Um, Strife at Heavy Fest uh, in like 2000, what is it, 13, 12 maybe, or 13 when we played? They played Blistered. That song's hard as hell. So I, I was like, fuck it. So I, I just went out and started moshing. And then I think the guy was playing drums and fireworks at the time. <laughs> he, he moshed and he grabbed me later and he was just like, yo, I did it because you did it. <laughs> he's like, he's like, I was feeling unsure, but he's, he's, as soon as I saw you doing it, I was like, I, I, I had to. I'm very straight edge, actually. I'm still very much straight edge. What I said was, God, I love, I, God, I love this. Uh, what I said to my band was, if they make Wild Hogs too. I will smoke weed and go see it. And then all of a sudden on IMDb, Wild Hogs 2 was on there. And I was like, that's what I said. And then, then they made the movie Old Dogs, which was the same director, writer or something, but it's considered a failure. So because of how bad Old Dogs did, they canceled production on Wild Hogs. So I got to keep my edge. Oh, uh, really crazy. Um, yeah, being from Los Angeles, uh, when I was probably about 13 through 15 or whatever, the Vinny the Troubadour would have uh, Monday night shows, which were, if you're over 21, they're free. If you're under 21, they're $3. Yeah, I mean, I saw Static X. I still have this, I, well, I sold it on, on eBay recently, but I had the, the Static cassette that we went before the X was added. The System of Down cassette somewhere in my room. I saw them a bunch. They were fucking awesome. They're still awesome. I had the Hybrid Theory demo uh, before they changed their name to Lincoln Park. Papa Roach was also another local. Alien Ant Farm was another local. Like all those bands just, like I saw Alien Ant Farm open for FAR in 98. Uh, it was just crazy. Being old, man. <laughs>